All right, so we're doing Hera today. And um, so I think when I think about it, it's really interesting because I respect Hera. Hera in my society because of America. So this is really interesting when you think about American history and the way that it was um, colonized or the European immigrants came in and what that meant for people the archetype of Hera. So in the US, people left, left home. They left their extended families. They left everything and they came here. <laughs> Excuse me, the Europeans. And so they created communities. And one of the roles was the wife of um, prominent people would be on, they had, they had a park board and a school board and a library board and a hospital board. You know, they had all these Americans more than anybody have clubs and they're self-governing. And they, so a lot of Hera types were running the town. And when I grew up, my mother and a lot of her peers, I know a lot of women from who would now be I don't know, 90, 80 in their 80s, who were smart and, um, you know, wonderful people, but they followed their husbands and then they did all sorts of community volunteer activities. So a lot of those women in my generation and younger generation are now professionals. So that role is not being picked up. So I met a woman and I don't know how prominent this is, but where I live, the women who are still home with families are fundamentalists and they split science and religion and they don't accept evolution. And they end up on the library board and the school board. <laughs> and when I was growing up, America was completely pro-science. We were competing with Russia for being the most scientific and for landing a spaceship on the, on the moon and all this stuff. So it was all go science. And now America is really changed. And that's not, you know, the Hera archetype, the women who play the role of Hera in small towns has also, I, I think has changed quite a bit. So that's kind of interesting. Now, if you come from a developing country, it's probably more likely that a lot of you said, you know, that you're supposed to get married right after high school or when you're young, and then you play this role of the wife and people have all these built-in expectations. So I'm looking forward to conversation about Hera um, that really shows some of the differences between the different cultures and also how you're gonna maneuver this. I think a lot of you really are thinking about this. Uh, how am I gonna juggle wife and kids and careers and all this other stuff? And so I'll be curious to hear what you say. So now I'm quiet and I will call on you simply in the order of the boxes that come. Uh, come to me. So Claire, go ahead. The first thing is either yourself or somebody you know, or somebody in the public eye. It's a person that you want to talk about. Okay, Claire. Um, I did a personal connection. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Um, it's my great grandma. Um, she obviously, it was the norm to kind of act more in this way than it is today. Her husband was a preacher and she, yeah, she devoted herself to him and the children they had and raising them. The only thing that I didn't really see as the connection is that she wasn't as harshly, like it wasn't as harsh as like her kids. She had the maternal instincts that I think Hera didn't. So that was the main difference that I wanted to point out, but there was clear devotion to the husband and because of the husband and the social norms, the children. 
and things like that and to his activities and his profession. I mean, that was her whole life. Okay, I will say that, that I'm a preacher's kid. And, <laughs> and it really is unique because the family is part of my dad's job. Yeah. We just can't avoid it. I know how my father thought because I listened to his sermons. Mm -hmm. And people came to our house. We didn't even own the house. And I remember a friend once saying she didn't know what her dad did when he went to the office. And I just like, I can't even imagine not knowing what my dad did. Yeah. So, yeah. Preacher's wife is a role. And my mother had trouble because she also taught art history and she was always spread thin. So that is interesting. And again, that's probably uniquely American. That's probably not what the rest of you have to say. But it is kind of interesting that in this case, we have the same pattern, but the actual culture, the way it applies it is probably really different. So good, Claire, I'm glad about that. Uh, Poppy, what have you got? Professor, I will explain if you mean later. I am prepared about that. So you'll do it later? Yeah, after a few minutes. Okay, so I will call, I'll put a star here that you do want to get called on. Um, okay, DT? DT, are you there? Okay. Um, so if, if something like this happens, please let me know. I assume that your electricity is down, but you do need to let me know because students can just shut down, you know? Anyway, I am not suspicious. I just need to know. Um, May, go ahead. Um, professor, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I think it's not a specific story of one person, but um, it's the thing I observe from some of my friends. I feel that like at this age, some of my friends kind of fall in love and also have some kind of feeling like zealous or like insecure about um, their partners, kind of like that. Um, and I see that some of them also do some of the things like Hera, like they did something bad with other women kind of like that, but I feel that um, it's just my opinion. I think that jealousy may be um, a necessary part of love, but I think the, the most important thing is what we do with it. I feel that if we, if we try to like do something with like the other people or try to control the external factor, we will feel more insecure about this ourselves. And kind of the more we try to control, the more we cannot do it. So I feel that um, the better solution for it is like to improve ourselves, focus on ourselves. And if we don't trust our partner, we, sh we should have kind of the kind of the clear conversation or something. Because I don't feel that if we do something wrong to other women or we try to control everything around, it could help because like we cannot totally control everything. We just can control our um, attitude and behavior. So. Yeah, I, I don't see any example from like um, the public eye, maybe because it's a bit like more personal. So I don't really know, but I see a lot of like Hera, Hera archetype in some of my friends. Yeah, and yeah, that is my sharing. Very good. Um, yeah, so uh, therapists will say things like, it's okay to acknowledge that you feel jealous, but don't act on it. And then tell yourself, you know, this isn't going anywhere, right? Um, but patriarchy really reinforces women competing against women for men, right? And so that's a big problem. Okay, Louis, go ahead. Yeah, Professor, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, actually, I I went to pass today because. I love people around me. I don't see any archetype of error. Actually, not, I don't see any, but actually I think it's happened. But it's like, like May said before, it's like personal thing that I don't know about the private life. So that's why I rather want to hear the story of other students. And I hope that I can learn something from that. So I want okay, to- Okay, that's today. great. That's a good, that's a good reason. Um, Jereen, go ahead. 
Um, can you hear me, Professor? Yep. Actually, I'll do the thumbs up if I can hear you, okay? Okay. So the archetype of hero reflects the capacity for a partner to be devoted, uh, trustworthy, and be and be able to withstand difficulties together. I mean, that's just my opinion. So I have a friend, and I can relate this to her. Um, she's from AW, and two years back, sorry, like three years back, she eloped with her boyfriend because her conservative family was against her relationship. So her parents began to blackmail her emotionally and they fixed her marriage without her consent to someone of their choice. So she turned out to be a victim of verbal and physical abuse as well. So, so just the night before her wedding ceremony, she fled away with her boyfriend and settled in a different city and got married. So they kept moving from place to place, looking for jobs and a place to call a home for their own. They were struggling with financial issues, so several fingers were pointed at them as well. After months of struggling and dealing with hardships, they went back to their home, I mean, to their village. And finally, they got accepted by their parents. I mean, although it was very hard for them to convince them. So a year later, she joined AUW and um, then she moved into the dorm rooms. So her husband now, I mean, they, I mean, before quarantine began, they uh, stayed in separate, they stayed separately. So he used to visit and visit her every Friday and go out with her on dates. So that's a story of, um, I mean, I can relate to this, relate this to Hira. Are they still together? Yes, they are. And now they're probably back. She's back with him. Yeah, they, she claims to be very happy with him. Okay, very good. And then she'll come back to AUW when it opens up again. Yeah. And her husband's so now they're now they're living together. Right. I mean, and um, but he supports her for getting her degree and stuff. Yeah. I mean, That's he's great. the one who introduced AUW to her. That's great. That's what I that's what I had in mind that my husband and I would go through the ups and downs and I'd go to school and then he'd go to school and you know all that stuff. So when it works, it works. Okay, news rut. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry for my voice. My I got cold. <laughs> all right, so um, relating to Hera, I found that Melania Trump is quite related with her uh, because I, I connected all the qualities of uh, of her with Hera. Like she's the only uh, uh, the second U.S. first lady in the American history to be born outside of the U.S. Um, besides, she's uh, quite talented. Like she knows uh, more. Uh, languages than any other first lady before like she knows english french german italian and all of that uh besides that uh she is also a successful model and uh, uh in addition to her modeling career like she was also known as a business woman as well all right so uh Hera would be melania trump because uh, though she is older but still beautiful but constantly having to hear about her husband's slittery and uh, mainly uh, uh, staying away from social media due to this. And uh, it is pretty like uh, known to all of us about uh, her husband's relation with other women and all, but she can't uh, say anything like uh, in front of everyone. So like uh, she'd just constantly be trying to get photos of her batting with Jesus and away removed from Twitter and all. So yeah, that's why I, Thing that she is related to Hera character. Oh, yeah. She plays the role. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, very much so. It's interesting because, of course, Hillary Clinton did not at all. She was Athena. And um, Michelle Obama was actually in a law firm, and Barack Obama was interviewing. To eventually, she was above him professionally when they met. So, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Okay, Ka Khadija, Khadija. 
I want to pause first, right there. Do you want to speak later or not at all today? If some example came in mind, I will let you know. Okay. Um, Marjiha, wait, where'd you go? Okay, Fahima, sorry. Good morning, Professor. Can you speak louder? Am I audible? Now you are. Okay. Uh, actually, I want to talk about my aunt. Um, she was in love. Uh, she was in love with. Uh, she was with, with lo in love with um, her teacher. Uh, actually, they fall in love together. Both. But though my aunt was didn't have any father, so the uncle her uncle didn't accept to uh, to let her marry that guy. But um, they and she didn't accept uh, to get married to another another guy without that boy that she loved. Uh, and also and they were like this, they continued like this with all of the strugglings from her family and relations pointing out to her that she's doing a mistake and she's uh, like, She's not obeying the things the the family says, and also they kept trying like this for for almost seven years. Uh, the boy also didn't get married to any other girl, and also my aunt. Uh, they they stayed loyal to each other, and uh, at the end, um, when uh, when it was like more than seven years, the um, family of my aunt. Uh, Finally, they said, like, if you're not going to get married to any other boy, even by force, so so we'll accept. But uh, when you're going to get married, uh, after your marriage, you're not going to, uh, you you don't have to call us as a family of yours. So that's it. We are not family to you anymore. And now they are like together, and they are and they are having two children. They're they're having uh, a happy life, with full of love, though their family are not with her. But they're happy. Is that your uncle? Was her teacher? Yes. That was your no. Was no no no. Uh, my aunt was the student, and a boy was the teacher. She. He was not our family members. Oh yeah, okay. So it was your family or his family that disowned? Our family. Oh, so, okay. So you don't have any contact with them? Um, they are happy. Though the, the, the uncle do not like, do not like her, but the uncle also, he, he says that I'm happy for her. Though we, th we thought that she's, she's doing wrong and, and it's a mistake, but they're having a happy, a happy life. So my uncle also is happy for them, though he's not going to contact my aunt. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, Rossi, can you speak? Hi, Professor. Um, I did wrote something down in the chat box. So... Oh. Can you hear me actually? Yes, it's I a can bit hear you. Noisy. I came outside. Okay, so I want to share the story of Priyan, and she's a 43 year old woman in Cambodia. And so she endured daily beatings and abusive words from her alcoholic husband. And she lives through a dysfunctional marriage, but she still sticks on to um, living with her husband regardless of um, the violence. And her husband is powerful and like the dominant one in the family. And she can't even confront him or protect her daughter and her other kids from her husband. And she doesn't dare to report it to the community leader. And so I feel like she represents the minority group of uneducated women in rural Cambodia who have used Chibapsrai, which is like an unofficial code of conduct that women need to follow to silence them from voicing their concerns and speak up against domestic violence and abusive partners. And because they are uneducated, they have to be dependent on their husband 
um, financially. So if they are divorced, people will look down on them and they do not have a way to support themselves. So for the rest of their life, they have to stick to the marriage regardless of whether it's good or bad. Okay, so that goes back to, if you remember, uh, Charlotte um, Gilman's claim that no other species, the, the female is that dependent economically to survive on the male. And so, yeah, that's a big issue because our children are born so premature in so many years. So good. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good example. Um, Lakin. Hi. So uh, the closest example I thought of for Hera would be my sister, Kristen, which I feel like I talk about her a lot. But um, anyway, she is 33. She has like a seven year old daughter, just to give some context. And I feel like she is very attached to her husband, even though he's like, he's very questionable. I personally don't like him but just that, that like blind devotion that she gives to him reminds me of Hera. Okay. Um, all right, Untari. Yes, Professor. I can hear you, go ahead. So Professor, I use my friend as an example, more precisely my friend in high school. Her name is Neneng and why I see her as a hero type of woman, it's because of her overprotective nature and very jealous of her boyfriend. Sometimes she even confronts people who are get too close with her boyfriend, not close in sexually way, but friendship up to a point until her boyfriend barely had any friends back in school. Even though she ex but even though she acts like that, with her boyfriend, I found her as a faithful person toward her boyfriend. That's why I talk of her as a hero type of woman. Okay. Um, Elizabeth. We're both here, by the way. Again. Oh, okay. So, um, and Sam, go ahead, Liz. So, oh, I gotta go up to my nose. Um, an example of a hero woman that I brought is Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay. She was first lady of the United States when her husband, Teddy Roosevelt, was the president. Um, and she was also... Franklin. Huh? Franklin was oh. her That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, she was always really, really devoted to him and everything that he did. And she supported all him throughout his four terms of presidency. And she even went out of her way to like do projects associated with him. But like she, like she was in charge of them, but ultimately she reported to him. And she was also very focused on like her public appearance and what the, like the nation thought of her and like how her family was seen. So yeah. That's that's why I think that she is a hero woman because of he cheated on her too and everybody yeah, he still but, stayed with him yeah he but, was having an affair with his secretary right but she still stayed with him and she didn't talk I about know. it she was very put together in the public that's why I think that she's a hero woman yeah I think so although she's a very progressive right yes but she's still the activist type yeah oh yeah that was her. That was her, her weak point, but it wasn't her fault, <laughs> right? Okay, Sam, go ahead. Okay, so for the woman that I brought that was a lot like um, Hera, I chose the main character of a Tyler Perry movie called Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Um, the mm -hmm. main character, her name is Helen. Um, she is a very devoted wife to her husband. Um, and I mean, she takes it, it's her job to be his wife. She provides him food every day at work. Like she bring him lunch. She provides for him sexually. She provides for him emotionally, whatever he needs, she does without question. And you see through some parts of the movie and stuff that he's actually very abusive 
which makes me think a lot of like uh, Hera's story and everything. Um, and so I would say like kind of the only difference would be that towards the end of the movie, you should cover your ears, we're gonna watch the movie tonight. We're gonna watch the movie later tonight because it's really cool. Me. But towards the end of the movie, uh, Helen gets revenge on her husband and proceeds to spend like an entire week just abusing him um, for revenge. So I think that's the only difference, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's why I okay. like Okay, You're good. good. Okay. Uh, let's see, who is next? Rook 9. Yes, sir. I'm sick. That's why I want to pass today. You're going to pass. Okay. Um, anybody? Uh, so I'm going back to Poppy, unless there's anybody. Yes, that I haven't... yes Professor. I found it. Okay. I found it a story related woman. She's my brother's wife, and she loved very much in my, uh, my brother. And in our family, we are not accepting, at first we are not accept the woman because she is not uh, related in our religious also. And uh, she loves, you know, the uh, three years. And uh, after, <clears throat> but when we are not uh, accepting uh, this woman and my brother, uh, you know, the. Uh, my brother and uh, uh, her wife uh, live with uh, together without family supported and and uh, and after uh, after living together uh, they got one uh, one son also and still we are not uh, connected with uh, them and uh, um, and as, and suddenly my brother uh, brother is died, died and then now uh, now my brother wife she is uh, struggle in her life also and now she is, is still uh, uh, doing a job because of her uh, son yeah okay do you think the family will ever change not still our family is not accepting because uh, the women's religious are not uh, same in our religious that's why okay, okay. now uh dt and kaji uh Kadi, khadija what nahida okay go ahead uh yes uh, can you hear me because sometimes your hair is uh, Yes, I can hear you. Me. Network issues. Okay. So I want to talk about one of my aunt. Okay. Raised and some husband because she's from a wealthy family and she looks beautiful as well. So at last she got married. All her demand. After a few months don't care much about her so she decided to took a take a baby to bring back her husband's concentration towards her but unfortunately the child was defective and it made her more angry and she left her the child in orphanage aggressive behavior indicates harass archetype yeah okay yes okay <laughs> Yeah, that kind of works, unfortunately. Um, okay, so there's DT and Khadija. Would either one of you want to present? Did you change your mind or are you okay? Okay, DT, grandma, loved her husband, but her husband always tried to control what she was doing. Okay. Um, let's see. And what she should and should not do. He was rude. It was, but at the time it was difficult to move forward or get divorced. My grandma uh, is the only only the person who could do that in her area, and she could move to from her husband, and she became more successful in artwork. Um, okay, good. Eventually she became successful. Very good. That's a good story. Um, so how about you, Kad, 
Khadija. Yes, Professor. I want to share a story related to my neighborhood woman. She is, uh, she has a lot of problem with uh, her husband, but again, she is just uh, tolerating all the difficulties. Um, her husband married three times. Uh, the first woman, she is the first wife of uh, her his, and again, uh, her husband married um, three more times but again she is just uh, tolerating all of the those things because of uh, her uh, her children she has uh, three children and three, three child that's why she accepted all of the difficulties that um, he she has in her life but uh, nowadays they have a lot of uh, like uh, fighting together and she want to get divorced because she want uh, she wants to do not tolerate any uh, any more these difficulties okay um so that actually that might show that she's ultimately more more of a demeter she cares more about her kids and so if she stayed with him because of the kids and now when they fight she realized the kids aren't benefiting from that. That would be Demeter reasons. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Khadija? Yes, I got it, Professor. Yeah, okay. So that's the idea that you might have the same behavior, but for a different reason based on the archetype. Okay, so now second round is um a work of art okay um sam did you come up with a work of art you already um had a movie but anything else you can think of um i actually didn't bring a work of art but i had a um, comment about one of the poems That's oh okay. yeah good you can comment um, on the poems yes so the Emily Dickinson poem, the one that is about how marriage is too big of a price to pay um, for women. You can, even read, you can read the poems if you want to, you know, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, anyways, when I was reading it and stuff, I, I found myself like really agreeing with uh, Emily about it because what she was saying is like, she laid down her valuable, she laid down her possessions for him, she laid down her wills, her wants, her life. And I get that probably in like older times, you know, centuries ago, that was the thing, you know, your husband was everything to you. Um, being married was everything. And so you would do anything or give up anything to have that status. But now, if I was trying to get married to someone and they were like, okay, you can't have a job, you can't read, you can't do any of that, I'd probably punch him in the face. And like, that would be it. And that's just, it's, it's weird to see how times have changed a little bit. Women are still, you know, the bottom of the, the hierarchy, but, and we're still getting stomped on by the patriarchy, but we don't have to give up everything for marriage anymore. At least not as much. There's still, there's still marriages where you give up things, definitely. But I guess, for me, for sure, I would not allow myself to give up something for a marriage, you know? So that was, I just, yeah. when I read it, it just made me angry. The more I read it, the more I got angry. I was like, this is <laughs> um, so as I think I said this, that a lot of women are giving up their careers or stepping back now during COVID, mostly because they want to take care of kids, not mm -hmm. the marriage, but you yeah. know, if it comes to one of them has to step back it's almost always the mom for um, sure and when i grew up my mom was very much a stay-at-home mom she and she talked to me about it like i remember i was like 13 i mean i having this conversation and she was like i don't want a job i don't want to do anything but sit at home clean the house and take care of my kids and i remember at 13 being like uh, -uh that's <clears throat> not for me you know and i still am not going to do that that is not for me but I do know right now with COVID, the women are the ones taking the steps back to take care of the family and stuff. Um, I also like one of the main points of this class is that women don't diss other women for the choices they make. Yeah. They're made as an independent person, you know? Yeah. 
and it's hard and you can't sit and tell a woman you're getting brainwashed for I mean, sure <laughs> but yeah. it's it complicated but don't don't diss them right up front right because well, and I mean, I support my mom. That's her choice. I support women if they want, if that's what they want to do, that's their choice. It's their, you know, their body, their choice, their life, their choice. As long as it's like you said, an independent choice, it's their choice. I'm perfectly fine with it. But the way that the Dickinson poem writes it is the guy was making her do it. And that's yeah. what makes me angry is when you're forced to give up your life. And if you want to sit at home and clean, power to you. That is your choice. And I will support you 100 percent but if your husband's like you're gonna sit at home and clean and make me sandwiches no yeah no. well that's what you know obviously a lot of the students from developing countries it's it's really a different right it's there's a lot more controlling going on for sure yeah so yes, uh, but, yeah but the students these auw students are really gonna move the needle way up uh okay liz what do you got um i did not bring a work of art because it's a little bit hard to find a work of art that depicts like the wife i guess I, in my opinion i could just have not been looking hard enough but um there's a show on netflix called bridgerton i don't know if you've seen it it's relatively new it's a period piece about um just like a family and the, the society they live in but it's set in like like 1820 I think and like it focuses on this one girl named Daphne who's her whole thing is she wants to get married because she feels like her life is not complete unless she gets married so I guess that could be an example of like a Hera archetype in like a work of art because it's a, a show yes of course but like her whole thing is she's like I have to get married and I have to have kids so right. I also saw this uh stories and like uh the thing was uh she she kept saying that the, her society won't accept her if she doesn't get married so yeah that was the whole point of her getting married if she doesn't get married then no one will accept her and she will just be useless and all so yeah okay We're very focused on like her public appearance and how people saw her and the fact that if she wasn't married, she would be like an old maid and be alone forever. There was some TV show. I never, I don't watch these things, but someone told me a Stepford Wives, Stepford Wives. Have you ever heard that? No, I've never heard of that. For a while, that was just huge. All you had to do was refer to it and everybody knew what it meant. Um, it meant sort of mindless women playing this role of wife. But anyway, time flies. We're in a different realm. Okay, Claire, what you got? Um, I wanted to talk about one of the pieces of work in the second part of the chapter. Okay, so I chose the prayer for revolutionary love. My comment about that, I kind of wanted to connect it to the struggles of like modern day relationships and dealing with social media and like the constant need for communication like through text message or calls it's just the convenience has made it that much more and it has also introduced a whole nother level of I don't know how to word it like trust issues I guess because in that poem it says um that we endure absence if need be without losing our love for each other without closing our doors to the unknown well, I wanted to say that like the standards that have been put in place because of social media and things like that, there is a fear that absence will just completely wreck the relationship due to so many other options being so close per se. Okay, did you want to read any of the lines that particularly hit you? Uh, yeah, um, I, I'm just going to read the snippet that's in the book there. Um, it I says like that it. I you okay, that I, any, any amount of it that you want, but feel okay. free to read something that moves you, whatever. Okay, uh, that our love for each other give us love for each other's work, that our love for each other's work give us love for one another. I thought that was really important because I've enjoyed it in the book. I made a note of it that um, a marriage could be like a more, you said it in your part, more of like a 
being a friend and a vision carrier than a husband at some point that kind of plays in. And I thought that that kind of connected to that. And then it goes to say that we endure absence if need be without losing our love for each other, without closing our doors to the unknown. And that's where I pulled in like the modern day, there's less unwavering devotion and it's easily shaken, it seems. <laughs> Yeah, actually, some of the students again have these really great examples. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that stuff out to you. Again, you're not required to read it, but you might be really, really want to read it. Yeah, some of our students, you know, their spouses live far away, so each one can do their thing, and the husband's very supportive. So that's very good. On the other side of that, Claire, uh, I was watching a comedy show or uh, radio, listening to it. And it said in divorce cases in the US, two thirds of the divorce cases uh, include the word Facebook. And so what I think is that people fantasize about romance and when it gets down to the relationship, the nitty gritty, it's not, you know, it's not romantic, but then they get connected to some old girlfriend from high school, right? Back in the days of innocence. And then the fantasy all kicks in again. And that is a big problem because in Facebook, you can tie together with old girlfriends or boyfriends or, you know, revert back to a more innocent time. And, you know, I just think it's really unhealthy. Does that make sense to you, Claire? what I was playing on with that convenience. Yeah. Okay, good. I thought at least that connected. Okay. Yeah. Poppy, can you think of something, Poppy? Sorry, Professor, I didn't get. Can you please repeat? Did you think of a work of art that was um, about a hair type, you know, something you know, I had my examples. Did you have a comment on the examples that I had or anything you wanted to present? You can now, Professor. Not, not right now. Or I want to, uh, I now I don't want to present, Professor, because I am not prepared. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you at the end. Okay, May, did you have something? Uh, yes. So um, actually, it is about a Vietnamese um, folk. Like, it's just like um, it doesn't have the translation version. So I will try to translate it a bit in my weekly post to you. But basically, the idea is like this folk is um, conveying the message about love and loyalty uh, to analogy. Basically, it compares like men with the with the boat, the ship, like it can travel like as far as they want on the sea or, or like, yep, uh, kind of like that. And woman is like a park, like um, which will stay there like no matter what. So basically it, um, it was composed um, many years ago in a traditional like society, um, but basically it depicts a very like, um, it depicts the reality of patriarchal society, you know, like men can have like as many relationships as they want and they can go as far as they want. And women always need to stay at home, like waiting there for them. And like, just um, they just can have like one husband or like one relationship at a time, kind of like that. But men can have a lot of like at the same time, kind of like that. So basically I think that it's, a, um, it's an unfair thing for women, kind of like that. Um, yeah, but basically it's just like depicts the reality. It's just like criticize the reality can kind of like that. So do you get my point? <laughs> yes, mm. actually the, I mean, the, what, another way to describe what um, the archetypes there about a spiritual quest story, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quest or life as a journey. And that has really been men, you know, it's only men that can have this quest story you know or this sea life as this big journey right they're they're on they're navigating their boat and yeah. so you know it is a big 
to try for women to try to think of their life as mm -hmm. as a journey and that somehow you can have two boats <laughs> right okay that's it's really hard to picture right it's yeah really yeah hard to picture but that's where you want to go i think so just just noticing how difficult that is to picture and how easy it is if you're thinking of a man is important to notice right um so that's good uh louis do you have something yes professor but can you come back me later sure um yeah, thank you jereen yes professor so I, I chose a song, Stand By You by Rachel Platten. Well, this song is about a girl helping her uh, boyfriend through depression. So uh, the artist expresses her love for someone special to her through the song and how strong her bond is with him. So she says she would go to all extent just to be together. So I think this song is about sticking together no matter what, going through highs and lows together. And I think this is related to Hera because she was sticking to her husband, even though he was cheating on her. And I think when a woman um, has, has the desire to have a strong bond with someone, she uses her will. And she is like willing to go to all extent. Okay. Did this, in that song, was he cheating on her when she was helping him? Um, no. Okay. It's, just, it's about just sticking together. I mean, okay. I mean, the thing, the thing that would be interesting to think about is that actually women experience depression a lot more than men for obvious reasons. <laughs> but would a man stick next to his girlfriend through a depression, right? It would be nice to have a song like that where you reverse the roles. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so just trying to picture that and realizing how much more difficult it is to picture that is a red flag right there, right? Um, anyway, that's a good example. It's just that if we want equality, we have to have it go both ways. Um, News Rot, do you have one? Uh, Professor, can you come back to me a bit later? Sure. Um, Khadija. Yes, Professor. Uh, I want to share about a poem. Uh, she is uh, a poet and she has a poem which is uh, related to her husband. She, she, is, uh, she was very fond in love with uh, her husband and she explained the love that she has uh, towards her husband and uh, that the difficulties she faced and she handled a lot of depression. Do she, uh, again, she expressed her feelings in the poem uh, and she expressed that uh, still she has, uh, she, uh, has a lot of love her husband. I think it is related. It's a related art to her. Does he cheat on her? Uh, yes, yes, he cheats. But again, she is. Uh, she has a poem which is uh, again. It shows that uh, she is falling in love, and she is still love him. Yeah, I mean that's what I was just saying, right? Would a man write a poem like that? I would like yeah. to see a man write a poem just like that. That he his wife through a depression even though she's cheating on him <laughs> you know it's it is amazing how when you try to reverse it all of a sudden you know oh boy you know I've never yeah. anything I've never even thought about that right so that's that's interesting because those are critical moments lots of times we'll yeah. think we're equal but in a crisis situation everybody falls back to these old, old patterns. So it's it's important to sort of envision things and realize no matter how much you talk about it, in a crisis, things go back. Um, Fahima, go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to pass. 
Kita so it's hard. The connection's hard. Um, did you want to write? Yeah, I will start. Go ahead. Can you, Fahima, do you have a connection there? I'll come, I'll come back to you, Fahima, okay? Uh, Lakin, go ahead. Okay. Lakin? Okay, Untari? Professor, I'll pass for today. Oh, okay. Um, Ruknain? Ruknain? Professor, I'll pass today. Okay, Nahida? <coughs> Officer, uh, for me, I didn't get uh, anything specific that matches with Hera, but uh, I got some good points to say. Actually, uh, all uh, they mentioned that uh, all relationship had to be primarily focused on some sacred patient beyond the relationship itself. Actually, it's a very good point to say. And uh, from the story of Hera, I saw, uh, I understood that many women play a role as wife in raising their child. Uh, there, uh, actually, there are yet many women that don't understand difference between the responsibility of mother and wife. Okay. And, um, yes, actually, it's very important to understand the difference the, between the responsibility of mother and wife. Actually, these are my observation. Okay. All right. Um, so even if you can't think of a work of art, you can always comment on one of the ones you read in the book, okay? So there's always something you can come up with. Okay, DT, do you have something? All right, uh, so so I'm going to break you into breakout groups. And what I want you to do is either comment on what the other one said, someone in your group said. And again, I'm not going to try to get you in the same groups. If you, if so, if one of the students said something interesting and it turns out they're in your group, point that out to them. Or you can just say in your group, didn't you think that one example was interesting? Okay, DT will be, okay, I'll be with you in a sec, DT. Um, or talk about that second example you had of a woman or the second example of art. So there's lots of things that you can talk about. Okay, DT, what would you like to say? Are you there? She will comment. I think uh, she wrote in a chat. Can you see that? Oh, okay. Why don't you read it? Go ahead, read it, Poppy. Okay. I'll I'll find it. Okay. Uh, pass. No, DT just said she wanted to comment, so I was just. Yeah, that's why I told you, Professor, because you are calling the DT, and I told you, uh, DT will comment in a chat. Oh, in the chat. Okay. I thought she just wanted me to call on her. Um, I'm going to have to have to put you into breakout rooms right now, though, because we're moving along. But again, when the breakout rooms come back together, anybody wants to um, uh, just unmute themselves and make a comment, that's great. But I'm going to do this right now. Um, put you into three groups. You can let me know if three works for you. And there you go. Let's see, open all rooms. Okay. Huh. 
let's see. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. How come that one only has three? All right. Um, Okay, DT, are you there? Check back. DT, are you there? Okay, can you go into your breakout room? Can you get into your breakout room, DT? Okay, so DT, oops. So all of you are moving into a space, a cultural space, where the expectations of marriage are changing and changing radically. And you all know how profound that relationship is, how much it affects so much else of what you can do with your life. Um, and so I did want you know, the prayer for revolutionary love is some kind of envisioning. I mean, you've got to envision something. You know, it can, again, be too idealistic. You're in love with your idea of your marriage. I had that problem. But on the other hand, you have to picture something so that when things go wrong, you can figure out, okay, is this just because I'm trying to integrate it? Or is this really the person I'm married to has really a different idea. Is it, is it just trying to bring it to earth or is it really a major discrepancy? Um, so, you know, the poem to revolutionary love is one way to envision what you're looking for. And so you would know if it's, if it's not compatible with even what you wanna to work toward. Um, the other thing that I do want to point out to you, well, the farm wife who got abused and she still has a, a, a twitch in her, she nods because her husband beat her. And again, a lot of you have examples of husbands that beat their wives. So uh, I don't know about you, but when I was your age, there were no poems about rape or abuse, there were no poems like this at all. And so I really gained a lot by reading poetry about women in situations where I had never thought about it from the woman's point of view. I had never read poetry that would really touch my heart and I could identify with these women. It really has expanded my mind and my consciousness. Um, so Sharon Olds is another one whose work I really like, but it was because it was about relationships, her relation to her father. Her father was alcoholic and abusive. And here's the one about her mother. And her mother had been so deeply affected by her father. She obviously had a eating, terrible eating disorder, basically trying to starve herself. Um, and then she talks about her husband and her relation to her kids. And I really love her stuff. But under the good marriage, uh, the poem New Mother, I really like that. And then she had a lot of them, herbal rap. The thing about it is that uh, eight years ago or something, her husband had an affair that she was completely unaware of. And she eventually got divorced, but oh my God, she wrote these poems. And so it was, you know, she had written these poems about the good marriage, 
And all of a sudden, and one of the poems I remember was she trusted her husband so much that one time she was doing the laundry and she found that there was this photograph of this woman that had been in his pocket and she just gave it to him. And he goes, oh, you know, he was kind of like, oops. But she didn't even suspect him. She trusted him that much. <laughs> so that was, that was really, it's called Stag's Leap is the, the book, the first book she wrote after about her divorce, her relationship to her husband. So that was such a shock because there had been so many really wonderful poems. And then my friend, so Andrea Hollander Buddy is a friend of mine. She taught at my school uh, for many years while I was there. And so she also wrote, she was very similar to Sharon Olds. She liked Sharon Olds. And they wrote about their relation to their husband and their children and her parents, her dad was a doctor. And again, I think as I recall, both of these women were closer to their mothers. Um, she was closer to her mother. Actually, she started writing poetry after her mother died because she said, I couldn't find anything that spoke to me about my grief except a poem. And so she wanted to be a poet. Um, so I think that's why she's a very humane and humanistic poet. She wants to write about people and those deep feelings and family feelings. And I really liked her poem, Goodness, right? As my husband set the table for breakfast, I stood at the kitchen counter. I mean, that image is so wonderful, except that he cheated on her for 28 years, like all the time that she thinks she's happily married. He's been on and off cheating on her. And while I was in Indonesia for the second time, I taught there 2012 and 2017 for the spring semester. So the second time, this all came out. She, she caught him in, in bed with another woman. She came home early from school. And um, so that all happened while I was gone. And I came back and I said, oh, hi, Andrea, how are things? And she looked at me and she said, I'm getting divorced. Ted told me that he's been cheating on me for, and I was just like, what? <laughs> and then I had to go to class, you know? So these things happen. And, um, and I'm, I guess I'm telling you that partly uh, to just let you know, you know, what there are ups and downs. There's this long, long story, um, 50 years between you and me. And uh, I have another 10, 20 years to go. Um, just try to not get too unnerved by things. Very, you know, you feel in situations like that, you feel very isolated and, and insecure and unstable. So if you could just catch yourself and go, oh, this, we talked about that in my class. I know about that. This isn't the first time people do this to each other. Um, it's possible, it's probably likely that I was a lot more unnerved about it because I really didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of social life or girl talk or girlfriends. I had one from junior high, but, um, but I do want you to sort of become resilient in those relationships. I know you're resilient about achieving academically but there are women who are really good, like me, at achieving academically. But oh my God, they're not good at all <laughs> at, at marriage or other, you know, social things relating to people. So, so it's just things are complicated. Um, I've also I've noticed in your writing that first of all, I think you do benefit from the groups. Um, I. I don't know. There might come a certain point where you would want two group sessions, but I don't get that impression so far. And also in a couple weeks, we're going to be moving on to something else, which I think, again, would make that more difficult. Um, let's see. I The other thing is that the examples are starting to overlap. And also the same person is being picked for different 
goddesses. And I want you to know that that's normal, that you can see a pattern while we're reading it. And then we read the next one is, oh no, it's actually more like that. Um, so I, when I'm writing, when I'm doing the book, I hope you don't care if you don't see as many of your uh, entries as somebody else, because I'm not putting names on, I'm just cutting and pasting. And I'm just trying to make it fit into something coherent. Uh, but I, you know, I hope you don't mind that. It's just some of you make comments that are very similar to each other. And so I just pick one of them. Um, let's see. So also, you might want to do a, a, you know, a second take and say, no, I don't think this woman fits that archetype. I think she fits better in this one. Uh, and that's all fine, you know. I'm not going to grade you lower or anything. I think self-correcting is good. Uh, but one of the punchlines is all women have to learn how to weave all these things in and out of their lives. And um, my story, obviously, I never, ever could do all seven of them at the same time. <laughs> not even close. So I did the, the wife, the mother, and um, the student for, you know, 17 years. And then I did the professional, right? The scholar, the workaholic for another 20 years. And now I'm focusing more on teaching than on writing. I was writing a lot because I was trying to stick it to these men in my profession to say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> But after COVID, I don't care. I care about my children and my grandchildren. Like what kind of world are they gonna have to lead? Uh, you know, I'm not gonna bother about those old men. They're not gonna change their minds. They left the next generation, uh, horrible, you know, environmental problems, all these problems. Like I'm not gonna sit and tell them I told you so. I'm not gonna waste energy on it. I'm going to just focus on children and grandchildren and students and try to do everything I can. You know, here's the stories that have lasted 2000 years. Here's how I applied them. It's not the way you're going to apply them. You're going to have a different experience. Make sure to support each other. Become resilient. Uh, surprising things will happen bad and good. Um, and I really wish you well. Now, um, the next for next time, it's Demeter, the mother. And um, I was really amazed at what a mother I was. And oh, there's my kids, right? <laughs> my kids, my grandkids, uh, all these pictures. I'm sure every grandmother uh, who can has a bunch of pictures of her kids and grandkids in the kitchen. Uh, but anyway, I'm in the kitchen because it's cold today and I don't want to turn the furnace up. I just turned the stove on. It uses less uh, oil, gas. So anyway, does anyone have a question? We're just going to keep right on with the same kind of process. There are a number of students who seem to be getting behind. I really hope they'll make contact with me. There's at least one that wanted to meet after this class. I'm available at the normal 8 to 10 o'clock each day, unless I let you know. Um, and if you need a different time, that's fine. So any other questions or comments? No, Professor, not yet. OK. Any, any uh, wrap up? Anybody want to say that there was something surprising or something they want to say? The final word about Hera, the wife. Anybody want to give their final word? Anybody decided they're never going to get married? <laughs> no, never say never. Let's see. Well, we have five minutes, but there's obviously since Hera is, I, I, I don't want to get married. Because uh, in <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
okay, why don't we do, I don't really mean to do that, but how, can you guys raise your hands? Is there some sort of hand raising function? There must be, right? Okay. There is. <laughs> all right. So I'm not, Lincoln, did you want to comment at all? No, but commitment does scare me. I don't know. Marriage, there's so much divorce. I don't know if marriage is that permanent. I don't know. It scares you me. You never know if it's going to work out. Yeah, you never know. And you get used to the person, so it hurts when you get separated. I get attached so easily. So do I. I mean... Okay, so my dad had a very powerful personality. And because he's a minister, I know what's on his mind all the time, right? I'm an ex extension of his job. And so for me, it is really hard when I'm with a guy not to be thinking about him, thinking, I just, it's just this suck. Um, I lose a sense of myself. But, uh, you know, that's partly patriarchy. It's partly my particular father. It's partly his particular job. But I think a lot of my students would be completely shocked at how I was willing to get treated by my husband. It was not overt. There was no, he didn't even yell at me. He was just nothing aggressive, but it's just, he was always smarter than me. It was just common agreement. And I never stood up to him. So the other thing is the first year that you're married, all this adaptation occurs and then it becomes invisible, you know, like Chinese water torture, you don't miss it. So it is, it is really hard, I think. I mean, I wasn't very good at it. So <laughs> uh, maybe some of you are much better at it. Maybe you have better role models, all that sort of stuff. But it is very powerful. It can really affect your ability to do all those other things. Um, to be a good mom or to be a good professional or all that, it's all very, very complicated. Um, especially in patriarchy, that poisons it, right? Patriarchy poisons what it could be. The idea of going through life and ups and downs and taking turns, helping each other with career and taking, you know, is a great idea. It's just so complicated that do not be, do not be um, ashamed if you can't pull it off. <laughs> that's all, you know, if you find I cannot do all this stuff, that's okay. Dr. Beck, Professor Beck is completely understanding and would never ever be critical of you. Okay, anybody else want to say anything? Okay, yeah, Poppy. No, Professor, not yet. I, I did want to say, you know, that internal dad, a lot of you commented about, you have this internal dad. And maybe you have an internal mom. But all I want you to do is the internal Professor Beck is always saying, you're great, you're resilient. I would never judge you. Whatever you do, you're wonderful. Okay? Don't forget that. <laughs> and make sure to treat each other too, because... That self-doubt is so easy. And then women just hurt themselves. Okay, just remember that from me. All right, you can go. Thank you, Professor. Ah, oh, Claire. Thank, Thank you, professor. professor. Yeah, you too. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. happy, yeah, what happy Valentine's Day, Professor. What a day to do Hera, right? Valentine's Day. <laughs> It was yesterday. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. right, you guys. That's right. For you guys, it was yesterday. Thank you, Professor. See you on Wednesday. Yep, see you. All right. Okay, did Professor. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> I want to say something about the assignment and uh, you know the assignment for we need to submit uh, all things. Yeah, so read the stream, right? Yeah. 
So start at the bottom and it, you know, you have to scroll and it leaps up and you scroll some more. So um, the, the first day or two, there's actually an attachment that says class process, but just in general, um, the first day was just, what do you think you're going to take away from the class? Now, now that you've already been in the class a lot, but you can you can write that for the first, I've got to have something for the first week of a post, right? So you go back and you read the stuff, you and then you have um, your comments just on the general reading. And you're just, if you weren't in the class, you're just going to have to write a little essay about your reaction to the reading and why don't you also take a few quotes from the reading and comment on them. Is that okay, Poppy? Yes, Professor. Professor, you know, I have some problems. You know, I cannot open the link because of uh, my YouTube is uh, not working still. I don't know what happened in my phone. So I need to uh, uh, see the, you know, the mechanism. Also, I need to see the, my phone. And then uh, one thing is, um, do I need to comment uh, or do I, uh, can I um, write in Google Doc uh, document or I need to up upload? I'm going to stop the recording.